hello students hope you are doing well so in this particular practical session we'll just see the concept of default constructor that we have just okay understand in our previous theory class okay so now we will just go with the same example that we have covered in our earlier classes okay and we will just see that how this default constructor is exactly working so we'll just create a class dummy okay so first of all we'll just see the implicit default constructor so in this we don't have to write any constructor in our program because it is the responsibility of the compiler to invoke it automatically and it is being hidden from the user okay it is in abstract mode you can say so if okay if i don't write anything any member variable or any member function in our class then you can see it is this is an empty class oh yes we can create this particular class there is no error okay in this a particular expression you can say or in this particular syntax okay but if i just want to create a variable of type class that is known as an instance of a class so if i just create this and if i try to compile a, the program okay so here you can see that there will be no errors in our program okay the compiler will successfully compile this program so okay irrespective we have defined the member functions or we have taken the data members or not okay it is not so much of importance here because we are just dealing with the constructor part okay so here the concept is as soon as this object is created okay as soon as this dm is created okay an implicit an implicit okay default constructor okay an implicit default constructor will be invoked automatically okay it will be invoked automatically by the compiler so automatically it will be invoked by the compiler the user need not have to do anything okay it is not the responsibility of the user if and only if okay the compiler will do this if and only if it doesn't found any other constructor that has been explicitly created okay so if there is no constructor then the implicit call will be transferred to the default constructor and a default constructor will be created though this program will not show any output because we haven't defined anything and you can see there is a blank screen because there is nothing to display there are no member functions there are no variables there are no messages that we are displaying here okay so we can we can if we want to create a constructor here okay so we can also create a constructor in this program so what we will do okay if i just create a constructor so the constructor must be defined in the public part this you have to remember so this is public and if i just write dummy and followed by this okay so this is also a default constructor this is the same default constructor okay this is the same default constructor so this we have created explicitly okay so this is explicit default constructor okay so this is the same constructor that the compiler must have invoked when there is no constructor present in our class okay so if i try to okay just just ignore this line okay because now we have created a constructor so there will be no implicit call but i am just correlating it with the previous example that if this dummy was not there okay then the compiler must have created exactly same constructor of this type okay having no body okay having no body and having no arguments so again if i try to compile this code okay it will show the same output as that of the previous code that we have done that the implicit type okay so if i just build and run this so again you will see a blank screen there will be no output again because we haven't written anything inside the constructor okay so it is this constructor is same as the constructor that the compiler is invoking but here now we can change this default constructor that is we can change we can make the changes to this explicit default constructor that's why this is known as a user defined default constructor now with what we can do we can write messages also we can write our business logic we can write the business uh, any processing type of thing we can do okay any addition subtraction anything we can do inside this particular constructor because this is also a special member function okay this is also a special member function so what i will write here i'll just write this is a user defined 
okay constructor so i'll just write a user defined constructor called so now if you try to now compile this code so what will happen okay now this line is okay not here so constructor will be invoked automatically by the compiler now okay so as soon as this object is created the compiler will search is there any constructor written by the user yes if there is any constructor found then the compiler will automatically invoke that particular constructor that the user has written or the call will be transferred to this special member function without any dot operator remember okay we haven't used any dot operator we are not using any dot operator and any member function like thing because this constructor is for the object okay it is correlated with the object so as soon as the object is created the call will be transferred okay it will be automatically invoked this constructor will be automatically invoked this member function will be automatically invoked by the compiler okay when it sees that yes it is present so now the output will be okay you will just see the output as user defined constructor call because now we have written okay explicitly because we are defining it explicitly so now we can write it we can write any message we can do any type of processing here so now if you try to build and run this you will see okay the output that user defined constructor is called so here you can see the answer is user defined constructor called because now we have written a constructor we have defined a body a body has been defined okay so if i okay if i again create an object so what will happen if i again create an object of type dm1 so what will be the output as we have discussed in our previous lecture that for each object this constructor will going to be invoked okay so now for this dm1 the output will be so we'll just put an endl here so that we can see it in a better way so if i try to compile this then you can see that the output will be two times okay two times this constructor will be invoked okay so output will be user defined constructor this is for dm and user defined constructor this is for dm1 so if i again create okay if i again create an object okay dm2 then again the output will be three times okay the three times this constructor will be invoked for each object so this will be user defined constructor called for dm user defined constructor call for dm1 as user defined constructor call for dm2 and in this way the whole working will be there okay so in this way you can do the task okay so if you again okay if you try to define okay in this if you try to define most of you will be thinking if again i just create an empty constructor what will happen so it will now result in an error because you are redeclaring the member function okay so if you try to compile this code okay so here you can see it has said that dummy cannot be overloaded because now you are redeclaring okay because this function cannot be overloaded function overloading you have just seen because now the exact prototype is present here okay now the compiler will be confused that to which constructor the the transfer must be given either to this constructor or to this constructor so that's why it has it has given that previously we have declared this okay and it cannot be overloaded because it is having the same argument so we will not write this type of syntax okay this type of illogical syntax we don't write we won't we don't need to understand that why it is happening okay why we are not creating similar type of okay constructors this part we will declare in the subsequent lectures that what if we try to overload the constructor in the same way as we are trying to overload the the functions so i hope now this is clear to you so thanks